Continuation Perfect Redemption Plan Part 5 Page 150 Chapter 12-2 Drive away doubts in your heart. Jesus says, Whosoever shall say, meaning it is for everybody, not just for some super spiritual people. Whosoever includes you and me. But how can we pray without doubts in our heart? James tells us, Let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. James 1 verse 6 to 8 The doubts in our hearts are there because we have lots of uncertainties, because there are many unanswered questions. This is the purpose of all these Bible studies, to equip us with the knowledge of the truth of the Scriptures. When we know the truth... It answers our questions. It replaces uncertainties with certainties. Remember the principle Joseph, Moses, Jesus and Paul taught us. If it is written, or God has done it for people in the Bible at least twice or three times, settle it in your heart that it is always the will of God, and he does it. Genesis 41 verse 32, Deuteronomy 19 verse 15, Matthew 18 verse 16 and 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1. We must now believe that truth and act on that knowledge of the truth. As long as there are some uncertainties about what the will of God is, we will have doubts. Is it God's will to heal, to make whole? Let us do our utmost to diligently search the scriptures and know the will of God on every subject. If it is written, we choose to believe it. That is how Jesus exemplified it for us. It is written, it is written, it is written. And when we stand on the word, we need to believe it and we shall have whatever we say. Chapter 12.3 Healing is not based on our good deeds. Jesus told us a parable saying, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican or tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, Standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one who exalts himself shall be abased, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Luke 18 verse 9 to 14 some believers, when I talk to them, tell me they are doing everything right. So why is God not healing them? They fast, they are not practicing sin, they tithe, they read their Bible, they study their Bible, they pray, they are involved in church activities. So why is God not healing them? Jesus tells every one of us, all these things we ought to have done, Matthew twenty three twenty three. But they do not commend us to God for healing. Healing is based on what Jesus did for us by his death, burial and resurrection. By his stripes we were healed. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 It is the mercy of God that provided both the remission of sin and the healing. According to the Webster Dictionary, mercy is that benevolence, mildness or tenderness of heart which disposes a person, in this case, God, to overlook injuries or to treat an offender better than he deserves. If you think you deserve to be blessed or healed because of your good deeds of the law, then it is no longer mercy. The only reason God heals us is because of his mercy, and Jesus bore the stripes for our healing. 
If we do not understand that it is because of his mercy, we will never even pray for unsaved people to be healed or brethren who are sinning. We will tell them, get your life straight first of all, and then we will pray for your healing. No matter what we have done, the mercy of God is available to heal each one of us, unsaved and saved people. David says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Psalm 23 verse 6 Two blind men followed Jesus, crying and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when Jesus was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus strictly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. Matthew 9, verse 27 to 31. Jesus had mercy on them, and they were healed. Everything we have received in the perfect redemption plan is based on the mercy and goodness of God, for Jesus died and rose from the dead to provide them freely to us. Chapter 12, 4 Believe that God wants to make everybody perfectly whole and perfectly sound. I remember one day I was in my house praying and God told me, Take a bus and go to the hospital in Withenshaw in Manchester, UK, and there I will cause you to hear my word. So I entered the bus, and it took me one hour to get to that hospital in Withenshaw, and when I arrived at that hospital, I stood in the car park for an hour, and God did not speak to me. I decided to take my bus back home. I thought I had not heard properly from God. As I sat in the upper deck of the bus going back home, there was a nurse seated on my left. She was talking on the phone with a friend of hers. They were talking in their mother tongue, but she didn't know that I could understand their mother tongue. And they were making fun of one of their common friends, who was so beautiful, but she gave birth to two children who are dwarfs, and the husband left her because she gave birth to dwarfs. Then the word of the Lord came to me and said to me, Barrenness is not the only reproach for women. As it is written, God remembered Rachel, who was beautiful in the eyes of Jacob, and God listened to her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bore a son, and she said, God has taken away my reproach. Genesis 30 verse 22 to 23. After those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, So the Lord has dealt with me in the days in which he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. Luke 1 verse 24 to 25 When a woman gives birth to a child with a genetic disease or mental illness or missing limbs or dwarf or blind or a cripple or deaf, the society blames the mother and that child becomes a reproach for that woman. And men also blame their wife for that and some even divorce them. The woman also blames herself and thinks that she should have done something to prevent such a thing from happening. But God says, I want to take away all those reproaches from women because I have compassion on women. The widow of Nain, whose only son died, Jesus had compassion on the woman, the Bible says, and raised her son from the dead. Even if it is not the woman that is dead or sick, but God knows when a woman has a sick or diseased child, it affects her. Luke 7 verse 11 to 17 On August the 21st, 2013, the word of the Lord came to me in a vision of the night. That word is not just for Jerry, but for all born-again Christians. That word says, I, you and I born-again Christians, am seated at the right hand of God in Christ Jesus, and all my enemies, including all manner of sickness and all manner of disease, all evil spirits, Satan and premature death, are made my footstool. Matthew 22 verse 44 Christ Jesus, the stone which the builder rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. 
This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Matthew 21 verse 42 to 44 The God of peace has crushed Satan, all his demons and all his works, sins, all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, demon possession and premature death, under my feet they are all subject to me, in the name of Jesus. Romans 16 verse 20 For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I have lifted my hand in an oath to the nations, and set up my banner, or standard of love for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Isaiah 49 verse 22 to 23 In that vision of the Lord, I saw someone was under my feet, and he was prostrated full length on the earth, and I took his head and scraped it in the dust full of gravel, and he had his mouth full of gravel, and was spitting it out of his mouth. He was so beaten and humiliated under my feet. When I came out of that vision, I knew the Lord was asking me to do a prophetic action. I knew that there was a park, not far from our house, Pat Lane Park in Manchester, UK, and there is a footpath full of dust and gravel. So I went to that park at 10 a.m. And as I was in that park, I saw a dog urinating and having a bowel movement on that footpath. And the devil told me, you see, this footpath is full of urine and dog excrements, even if you cannot see them. But I ignored the devil, and I stopped on a portion of that footpath that looked clean. And I prostrated my full length on the dust of that footpath, and scraped my face on the left cheek and the right cheek, then put in my mouth some of the gravel and dust of that footpath. Then I stood on my feet and spat the gravel out of my mouth, and the Holy Spirit told me, Are you only going to do it once? And he brought to my remembrance a mistake of King Joash, who only struck the ground with the arrows three times for the Lord to defeat his enemies. The Syrians and the prophet Elisha was angry at the king, because if he had struck at least six to seven times, then the Lord would have utterly destroyed his enemies, the Syrians, and seen them no more. 2 Kings 13 verse 14 to 19 So I repeated that prostration to my full length and the scraping of the face in the dust and gravel left cheek and right cheek and put gravel and dust in my mouth twelve times and after the twelfth time when I stood on my feet for the twelfth time and I read the words out loud that God gave me in that vision that I have written above and added Thus shall the Lord do to all my enemies, all demons, Satan, all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, all premature death. God will utterly destroy them and make people perfectly whole and perfectly sound. Matthew 14 verse 36 and Acts 3 verse 16 I repeated that prophetic action twelve times, so that the Lord would not just utterly destroy all my enemies, but I will remember them no more. Exodus 14, verse 12 to 14. And then 12, which represents the government of the Lord, the 12 apostles of Jesus, that Jesus will establish his apostleship with mighty signs and wonders in the 300,000 families in Glasgow and 50 European nations in the West and South. He has given unto me, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Isaiah 9, verse 7. For God who worked in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, also worked in Paul in the apostleship to the nations, will also work in Jerry, Galatians 2 verse 8. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 5. And in nothing will I be behind the most eminent apostles, though I am nothing, and truly signs, wonders, and mighty miracles, and deeds will be accomplished at will among people saved or unsaved. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 11 to 12.
and as I was wiping my face and dusting myself off, a guy walked on the same footpath with his black dog, and that black dog came and licked up the dust that was in my hand. And I said, Thus all demons will lick up the dust of my feet and hands, and I will trample you underfoot. You will eat dust and gravel in the name of Jesus. After that day, something happened in my heart. I truly believe that God heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease and makes people perfectly whole and raises the dead at will. As it is written, the people begged Jesus that they might only touch the hem of his robe, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Matthew 14 verse 36 and on October the 26th, 2013, the Lord spoke to me in a vision. In that vision I was polishing my shoes before stepping up onto the platform to preach, and a damsel asked me, Have you been trampling upon that serpent? I said, Yes, and I have come here also to trample upon him. Then I stepped up on that platform and opened my Bible and said, I saw Satan falling like lightning. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, As you know, the speed of light is about one million times faster than the speed of sound. So long before you came to cast out that demon or to heal that sickness or disease or to raise the dead, Satan and all his demons and their evil works were already defeated. That is the revelation Jesus gave his disciples when he sent them to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils and raise the dead in his name. And they came back so happy. As it is written, the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld or saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven, meaning before the word came out of my mouth to send you to preach, cast out devils, raise the dead, heal the sick, Satan was already defeated. You are fighting against a defeated foe. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, verse 17 to 19. My younger brother Nel Melando called from Metz in France, and he told me that after he received his water baptism in his church, the Lord spoke to him in the night of October the 30th, 2013, and said to him, Jerry Melanda, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, Ephesians 1, verse 1, I told him, I already know it. The Lord Jesus ordained me a couple of years ago when he appeared to me. But thank you, for Jesus Christ has confirmed it again, for I never mentioned it to any of my family members. So I prayed with my younger brother and we asked for direction from the Lord. Chapter 13 With long and abundant life I will satisfy you. David said, in your book were written all the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Psalm 139 verse 16 Long before you and I were born, God appointed the number of our days on this earth. The question many people have in their mind is, some people live long and some people die young or are prematurely dead. Maybe it is God's plan. It is a lie from the bottomless pit of hell. God says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. There shall nothing cast their young, no one shall suffer miscarriage, neither your cattle nor your woman, nor be barren in your land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Exodus 23 verse 25 to 26 my brothers and my sisters, it is not God's will that any should be barren. He blessed mankind and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1 verse 28 It is also not God's will that any woman should suffer miscarriage. It is the work of the devil, for he comes but to steal, kill and destroy. John 10 verse 10 we shall fulfill the number of our days. God wants us to enjoy a life free from sicknesses and diseases. He promised to take them away from our midst. 
When the Lord brought the Hebrews out of Egypt, the house of bondage, the Bible says, He also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen on them. Psalm 105 verse 37 to 38 Think of it, if they, with the blood of a lamb that they applied to their lintels and doorposts, there was not one feeble person among their tribes, how much more you and I, with the blood of Jesus, ought not to be one feeble person among born-again believers? That is why John tells us, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. 3 John 1 verse 2 there is a place beyond divine healing where born-again Christians are supposed to live. It is called divine health, where not even one feeble person among the born-again believers is found, and that is the will of God for you and your family. God promised, With long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Psalm 91 verse 16 He did not say with a short life, but with long life he will satisfy us. We will fulfill the number of our days. Exodus 23 verse 26 Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly to the full till it overflows. John 10 verse 10 What is the point of living long on earth and being in pain? People would say, My sickness is my cross, and Jesus is glorified by my sickness, for I am carrying my cross. My friend, this is from the devil. Sicknesses and diseases are the work of the devil. They are not the cross of Jesus. Jesus is not glorified in our sicknesses and diseases, but in our healing. God does not want any of the diseases and sicknesses of the world to be on us. God wants us to enjoy our life. Moses was 120 years old and his eyes were not dim, nor his natural strength abated. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 So shall it be for you and me in Jesus' name. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Genesis 6 verse 3 God's plan is for us to fulfill the number of our days, 120 years. He forgives all our iniquities, heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction, crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies our mouth with good things, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 103 verse 3 to 5. God wants us to enjoy abundant life and long life. We just have to know it and believe that Jesus paid for it with his own blood. In Psalm 90, Moses was writing the spies who went to spy at the land and brought the report, but the people did not believe the good report of Caleb and Joshua, so a curse came upon all that generation. God said all that generation which came out of Egypt will die in the wilderness, but their children who were born in the wilderness will enter the promised land. Of all who came out of Egypt, only Joshua and Caleb entered the promised land. The curse cut short their lifespan, so Moses said, The days of our lives are seventy years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet their boast is only labour and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. Psalm 90 verse 10 to 11 so it is not God's plan for any of us to die young. Seventy and eighty years were curses, because God was angry with that rebellious generation, and his wrath abode upon them. They were curses. But you and I, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Jesus has become our peace offering to reconcile us to God, and the fiery wrath of God does not abide upon us. And God is not angry with us. The days of our life shall be 120 years. Chapter 14 Our Healing is a Done Deal
The prophet Isaiah saw prophetically what Jesus would accomplish for us on the cross and he prophesied. Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 Surely he has borne our collie, malady, anxiety, calamity, disease, sickness, grief, and carried our makob, anguish, pain, sorrow, affliction. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. There are many things you have some doubts about concerning your healing. God wants you to know it is a done deal. He said, surely, it is the Hebrew word Achan, surely, truly, certainly, verily. Your healing is a done deal. You can be certain about that. It is the truth and not a lie. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. He has said, he will do it. He has spoken, and he will make it good. Numbers 23 verse 19 And God did it. He kept his word. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came in the flesh and died on the cross to make what God uttered good. And in view of what had been fulfilled, Peter retrospectively said, Jesus himself bore our sins in his own flesh on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 What Peter is telling us is that Isaiah prophesied it and Jesus fulfilled it. Our healing is a done deal. It was purchased 2,000 years ago on the cross in the body of Jesus. We should not accept sicknesses and diseases in our body. It is illegal for them to be in our body. If someone can remove the stripes on the back of Jesus, then they can put sicknesses and diseases on us, but it will never happen. He is bearing those stripes and is alive. Sickness and diseases are not welcome on us. They are illegal on us, for Jesus legally paid for our healing, even perfect wholeness. He tells me, surely I bore your diseases and sicknesses, your anxieties and your calamities. It is illegal for the enemy to put them on you. I bore them for you. Surely I carried your pain and anguish, your sorrows. It is illegal for the enemy to bring them back. I carried them away. Surely by my stripes you were healed from all of them. The calamity that happened to Job when he lost all his children should not happen to you, because Jesus bore your calamity. Job 6 verse 2 He will raise him from the dead. It is not God's plan for any to die after his child. When Jesus met the widow of Nain whose son died, he had compassion on the mother and raised her son from the dead, for Jesus bore our calamities. She does not have to bury her son like Job did. Luke 7 verse 11 to 16 You and I have a better covenant than Job. We should not allow the devil to bring the calamity he brought in Job's life, in our life. For Jesus bore our calamities. We do not have to bear what Jesus bore for us. In Luke 8 verse 41 to 56, Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, lost his 12-year-old daughter, and he came to Jesus to raise her from the dead. Jesus did raise her from the dead, for he bore our calamities. Therefore Jairus did not have to bear it. To be continued.